Hi everybody, this is Crystal. Today I'm going to show you how to make this bag. It's really pretty easy. It's made with front post, back post, double crochet pretty much. And then you're going to need a set of handles. Um, I got these handles up an old bag from a resale shop. Um, you can buy handles on eBay or Amazon or you can go to your local resale shop and see if you can find some handles. Um, or you can make your own handles and you don't have to have two. You can make one long one or however you want to do it. It's really up to you. But let's go ahead and get started. Okay, for this project, I am using Red Heart Super Saver, which is a medium worsted weight, 100% four ply acrylic. And the color I'm using is called Coral. And there's 364 yards in this skein, and one skein will be plenty to complete this bag. And then I'm going to be using a size J, which is a six millimeter crochet hook. Now you want to start out with a chain of 90. You can make this bag bigger or smaller, but it, I'm going to make sure that it's done in a multiple of two. So what we're going to do is we're going to, without twisting our chain, we're going to follow it all the way down. And we're going to slip stitch into the very first stitch to form one large ring. And what we're doing is we're starting at the bottom of the bag and working our way up. And later on, we'll sew the bottom of the bag shut at the end. So we'll go ahead and slip stitch that. Just like that. Now we're going to start off with a chain of three. And that chain three is going to count as our first double crochet. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work one double crochet in every stitch all the way around the whole ring. Just like this. And when I get back around to the beginning, I should have a total of 90 double crochet counting that chain three because that's going to count as one. So I'm going to go ahead and continue working one double crochet in every stitch until I get back around to my starting point. Okay, once you make it around and you count it and you have 90 stitches counting this chain three, we're going to slip stitch into the top of that chain three and now we're going to be working um, front post double crochet and back post double crochet now I'm going to start now I'm not going to ch do a chain three for a double crochet anymore I only did that that first time I'm going to chain one now and I'm going to go right back into that same stitch and double crochet and that's how I'm going to start every row from now on like that now I'm going to do a front post double crochet around the post of the next stitch. So I'm going to yarn over and go around the post so the post is on the front of my hook. And then I always kind of just fold it in half and then I do my double crochet. Now the next I'm going to do is a back post double crochet around the post of the next stitch. So I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to go from the back of my work through and then back around the same post. And now the post is on the back of my hook. And now I'm going to do my double crochet like that. And I'm just going to be doing a front post double crochet, back post double crochet repeat all the way around. So the next stitch is going to be a front post double crochet. So I'm going to yarn over, go like that. So the post is on the front of my hook. And then I'll go ahead and do my double crochet. And then the next one is going to be a back post. So I'm going to yarn over and go from behind my work and around the post that way. That way the post is on the back of my work. Double crochet. And now the next one is going to be a front post again. Yarn over. 
go around like that and double crochet and then the back post around the next like that and I'm just going to keep repeating this front post double crochet a back post double crochet all the way around so front post and the next one is the back post and then the front post and then the back post and what it's going to do is it's going to start making ribs and the more rows you put on the better you'll be able to see them but go ahead and continue the front post double crochet back post double crochet repeat until you get back around to the beginning and when you get back around you still should be maintaining your 90 stitches so when you get back around you still should have 90 counting this very first double crochet so I'm going to continue until I get back around okay when you make it around all we're going to do is chain one and double crochet right back into that same stitch again and this is how we'll do every row and then now all it is is just lining up the post and doing the front post back post double crochet repeat again so you just front post double crochet around the post of the next stitch and then it's back post double crochet around the next stitch right around the back of it like that and then front post around the next and all you're doing is keeping the post lined up and then back post front post and then back post just like that and you just want to do that all the way around again until you get back to the beginning and then you just end it with a slip stitch in your first double crochet and once you I went ahead and did the rows you can see once you get going on it it starts to look like this you can see the ribbing is all lined up and that's what you want you just repeat that row now you can do as many rows for as tall as you want your bag to be I did 22 total rows now remember you don't have to do it you can do it bigger if you want that's completely up to you but I did 22 and you can count them by, I know sometimes it's hard to see these rows, but if you grab them, there's one, two, you can put your finger through the row, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and you can do as many as you want. And once you get that done, now we're going to do a row of, I'm going to put a brim on it. I'm going to do a row of single crochet decrease. So I'm going to start by chaining one. I'm just starting right where I left off. I didn't clip my yarn or anything. Just when I slip stitched here into that first double crochet, this is where I'm starting again. And I'm going to chain one. And I'm going to single crochet right back into that same stitch. Single crochet. And what I want to do is eight single crochets in a row and then I'll do a single crochet decrease. So that counts as my first single crochet. So I'm going to go to the next stitch and there's two. We're working on top of the, we're working on the top of the stitches. So we're not doing around the posts anymore. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight and now I'm going to do a single crochet decrease and that's worked over two stitches so what I'm going to do is go into the next stitch and drop a loop and then I'm going to go into the next stitch and drop a loop and yarn over and go through all three loops on my hook and that took two stitches and you made it into one now I'm just going to repeat that all the way around I'm going to work eight single crochets in a row 
There's one, two, three, four, five, oh, six, seven, and eight. And now I'm going to work a single crochet decrease. I'm going to go into the next stitch and draw up a loop. And then I'm going to go into the next one, draw up a loop, yarn over, and go through all three loops on my hook. Now I'm going to do eight single crochets in a row again. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now a single crochet decrease. Go in, drop a loop, go into the next one, drop a loop, yarn over, and go through all three loops. So I'm going to repeat that pattern all the way back around to the beginning. Okay, once you make it around, you should be ending in a decrease. So your last stitch should be a decrease. And you should have, after you do that decrease, 81 stitches all the way around. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to be working in rounds now, so I'm going to put a stitch marker here and I'm just going to use this piece of yarn. And I'm going to put it right there so I know where I begin and where I end. Now what I'm going to do is work one single crochet in every stitch around, but I'm going to be working in the back loops only. So I'm going to jump over here to this first single crochet. Not the chain one, but the first single crochet. So you can see your chain one here. Don't go in that. You want to go into the back loop only. And you can see that there are two loops to the stitch. Here's the front loop and the back loop. So we're only going in the back loop. And that's going to kind of create a ridge just for kind of decoration, I guess. But I'm going to work one single crochet in every stitch, working in the back loops only. And if you keep going along, you'll be able to see the ridge here in just a second. And if you don't like the looks of that ridge on here that it's putting, working in the back loops, just go through both loops. And it'll be nice and there won't be no ridge at all. That's completely up to you. You can do it however you want. But you can see it puts this little line. And it'll put it on every single row that we do. So I'm going to go ahead and work one single crochet in the back loop of every stitch until I get back to the beginning and when I get back around I still should have 81 stitches. Make it back around to your stitch marker. What you want to do is pull your stitch marker up and set it back here and now I'm going to go again working one single crochet in the back loops only. So I'm just going to jump to this next stitch and work in the back loop and do a single crochet. Now I'm just going to keep doing rounds of one single crochet in the back loop of every stitch until I get the brim part of my bag as tall as I want it to be. Probably do a few more rounds but and you can do as many as you want. So I'm going to go ahead and get the brim done and I'll let you know how many rounds I do. When I get back around here to the beginning, I'm just going to move my stitch marker up and go again in the back loops. And I'm just going to keep doing that until I get this a little bit taller. Okay, I went ahead and did four rounds of the back, the single crochet in the back post only. But you can do more if you want. And then when you make it back around to your stitch marker, all you want to do is just slip stitch into that next stitch like that. And then we can tie that off, pull that stitch marker out because you don't need it anymore, and clip this yarn, and then hide the tails, and then we're going to sew up the bottom. I'm actually going to make, I'm gonna find my seam here. The seam, I'm going to put it on the side, that way it's not as noticeable. I would recommend you doing that putting it there kind of on the side and then we'll sew it up flip it upside down and what we're going to do is slip stitch the bottom together 
So once you get it how you want it to be, you kind of just pull it up here, grab a stitch on this side, and grab one on this side. Pull your yarn through, chain one, and now I'm going to slip stitch it together all the way across. So I'm going to go into the next stitch, and then I'm going to go into the next stitch on the back side, and then I'm going to slip stitch like that. And then I'm going to go into the next stitch, and then the next stitch on the back side, and slip stitch. And again, the next stitch, and the next stitch on the back side, and slip stitch. And I'm going to do this all the way down. Just slip, simply slip stitching the bottom together. Now, if you wanted to use a yarn needle too, you could do that. Slip stitch, stitch on this side, stitch on the back side and slip stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and finish sewing this bottom up. So I'm just going to slip stitch it all the way down to the end. And when I get to the end, I'm just going to clip my yarn, tie it off, and hide all my tails, and then we'll get started on the handles. Okay, now for the handles, you can use any type of handle that you want. You can buy handles, you can make handles, you can use two short ones, one, you know, long one, two long ones, whatever you want to do. I got these handles off an old bag from a resale shop. So I'm just going to use these. Now if you want to make your own, that's fine. Just make a couple short ones, one long one, hook it from each side, however you want to do it. Or you can look at your local resale shop, see if you can find any old bags. They're usually pretty cheap. But mine has these rings, and all I'm going to do is just sew. I'm just going to eyeball it, and I'm going to sew them equally across so if yours don't have rings or if you have a pair of handles and they don't have rings you know you just attach them however if they have hooks or something you can just attach them to the right straight to the bag or if you're making your own just sew them on with your yarn needle this is, but this is how I do it when I have a bag that has rings like this. Simply just sew the ring on. So I'm going to go ahead and get both my handles sewed on and you can decide what you want to do for your handles. We just, I think it would look good with a long handle and I think it would look good with short handles so you know whatever one you decide. I know it'll look good. Okay, once you get your handle sewed on, that's it. That's all there is to it. I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you make this or anything else, I'd really like to see a picture of it. You can post a picture on my Bag of Day Crochet Facebook page. I'll put a link to that below in the description box. And you can check me out on Pinterest, Pinterest, Twitter, and Etsy. I'll put the links to all that stuff below. And until next time, have a good day.